Hey everybody, it's Scott from SCG Studios coming at you with another video today. Uh, in this video I wanted to show you how to turn your cruddy drum recording into a good sounding one. Um, sort of. Uh, I, I'm going to show you how to use a recording as a MIDI trigger. Because if you're like me and you struggle to record drums, uh, sometimes you got to do tricks like that to bring everything back to life. Um, so I'll show you here in my session. Uh, by the way, this is my song called All Alone. Uh, it's available now to stream. Uh, just came out kind of throughout the week. I released it immediately. I didn't do a release date or anything. Um, so it's slowly trickling out to stores, but as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, it's already available on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Music, all that stuff. So all the big players have it. So you can go ahead and find it. Um, it's all alone. My band is called Gate, G-A-I-T, so you can go find it there. Anyway, so uh, shameless plug. Uh, I want to show you how my kick sounded before uh, I did the replacement. So, not too bad. Um, I will bypass the EQ I did on it first. So it's not horrible, um, it's a little bit just muffled, um, there's not a ton of low end and there's not a ton of high end, it's just kind of this mid-range blah sound of a kick. Um, I put this EQ on it to try to boost the, the smack of the beater hitting the drum a little bit. Um, there was a little bit of just humming going on there from some of the other drums, so I knocked that out a bit. And then I boosted the lower stuff, but it's still... Um, like I didn't love, didn't love how it sounded. Uh, so here's how my kick sounded after I did the replacement. Way better. Um, and that's just from a MIDI drum kit that comes with Cubase. So I want to show you how I did that. Um, so my original recording here, I will double click on it. Um, and I'm just showing you how it works in Cubase. I don't know if there's something similar in other DAWs, but this is how I do it. Double click on the track. Um, oh, going back. Um, we, My brother's a drummer. We recorded a, a few different passes through the song and kept the good parts. Um, so it's kind of spliced together a little bit. But that means you'll have to do this for each segment, but I'll just show you this one. So in Cubase, when you're editing audio, you get all these different controls here. So I've got, um, if I wanted to create a groove to quantize everything else to with my kick drum, I could, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, rather than everyone trying to play to uh, just a normal click that is the steady tempo, uh, I could record the drums first, create a groove from that, set the click to click on that groove and then if I record all the other instruments after that they can be listening to that click in their ears so that they're always synced to what the drummer actually played uh, so that's cool I don't normally do that but it's available I could do that if I wanted uh, anyway so the first step here I've got this hit points tab and I've got a threshold adjustment so essentially when I lower this threshold, it's going to decide where to split this audio clip up, how to segment it based on where I set the threshold. So you can see all these other vertical lines are coming in there. That's how many pieces that the that Cubase is going to split this recording into. Um, so I want to make sure I lower the threshold so that every single hit of the kick drum gets captured. Uh, so I want to see a vertical line by every, yeah, every kick hit like that. All these little ones are some microphone bleed. Um, those are probably my snare hits. Those are very likely my snare hits. Um, so I think I've got every kick in here. I'm going to lower it a little more. I've got plenty of room before I hit anything else that I don't want to trigger on, so uh, that should be... You don't want to set it too low or it'll falsely trigger on the snare hit and it'll be all sorts of whacked. So you do that and then all you do is click create MIDI notes from hit points. Pretty simple. So I'm going to click that. Um, and because this is a kick drum, 
I'm just going to use a fixed velocity, so that tells you how loud each note is. If it's fixed, that means each note is going to be the same exact level, um, which is a drawback from MIDI. Like, it'll sound robotic, but um, you know, normally if, you've, if you're recording a real... In a real recording, not every note is going to be exactly the same strength, you know? Not every drum hit is going to be the same velocity because the drummer is probably going to play with some feel. And uh, with MIDI, it's hard to capture that. So, But because this is the kick drum, there really isn't much variation in that anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it as a fixed velocity. Um, the pitch, I'll just leave that alone because I can change that wherever I want. I should know what the kick drum is off the top of my head, but I don't. And the destination is a new MIDI track, so I'll hit OK. Now I'll back out of here. And here. Oop. And here. <laughs> Alright, so I should have a new track down here, yeah. Now I've got a track full of MIDI notes that are hit at exactly the same time that the kick drum was hit in the original recording. So then all I gotta do is create an instrument track. And Cubase has this... go away. Cubase has an instrument called the Groove Agent. So I will hit add track. I should have put the output to drums, but oh well. Um, and then the kit I really like is 29 Min Jupiter. Um, I go to the patterns here. So they, Cubase is cool. Like you, ha there are all these kind of stock patterns you can just drag into your project and just have. Um, I never really use that, but it's a good way to kind of sample how a kit sounds by just playing one of these patterns. So I like how this one sounds. Uh, and if you look here, the kick has a note, and that is C1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my drag my MIDI stuff down onto this instrument track, and I'm going to hold Control so that it stays at the exact same time alignment. You can see if I release Control. I can kind of move it, but if I hold control, yeah, if I move it down, then hit control, it'll intentionally not budget along the the x-axis, if you will, the, the time. So I'll do that. Double click. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to grab every note. And then I saw that the kick earlier was C1. And I'm going to do the control thing again, so you can see it wants to move it ever so slightly. If I hit control and then drop, it'll stay exactly locked in. So now I've got a bunch of kicks. Uh, that are exactly in alignment with what I recorded. And then the last step would be to go up here to edit, render in place, render with current settings. It's just the default settings. And now it's audio. So then I just rename it, kick. This is like second. And then I again drag it up. Well, I would drag this whole track up to where all my drums are. And uh, that's my new that's my new kick track. So I'm just going to delete these now that you've seen them. So that's how I do it. Um, I'll solo the drums here for you. So that's with the new kick. Here's the old kick. The new kick. Well, there you go. I could have done the same thing with my snare because I, the snare I had to do a lot of stuff to, like some uh, kind of a similar story with the uh, with what I did with the original kick drum recording. Um, unfortunately, the snare, I. There's a trade-off, like I could have used another, the MIDI snare that was in that same virtual kit that I got the kick from, but I I thought the snare sounded passable. Um, this is just a drum kit I have in my basement, and I'm it's not really, I'm still tweaking it. So <laughs> the snare needed a lot of help after I recorded it, which you shouldn't have to do, you should get it right at the source, you know, the recording itself should sound good. But it didn't, so I boosted a ton of this, the highs here and 
cut out this is kind of that same frequency that I had in my kick that I cut out too um, there's something ringing there um, so I, I left the snare there because my brother did a lot of crazy stuff that would have been really difficult to replicate in the MIDI world um, so I in order to preserve kind of the life of the recording I left it alone and did as much surgery on it as I could um, did a slow attack, slow release to kind of, or slow attack, quicker release to try to kill the the tail of the snare a little bit and make it pop more. Um, that kind of worked, but anyway, that's not the point of this video. Um, so you can see how easy it is to replace. You can do that with any drum you want, really. Um, you can replace your entire drum kit recording with a MIDI kit if you so desire, but just beware that there's a trade-off. Um, you will lose the life of the recording because MIDI is robotic, it's all digital. Um, it may require lots of editing of the individual MIDI notes to bring back the, the feel of it. Like if you have a kind of a snare build that you're, you're hitting the snare a lot and you're hitting harder and harder kind of to build into a chorus, kind of like... Uh, what, uh, this one. So, started quiet, got louder and louder. You'd have to redo that yourself. Um, I've tried using the, um, dynamic velocity. So if you go, let me go back here. Great MIDI notes. You can use dynamic velocity where it tries to actually read what the level of the recording is and give you a MIDI note that is that corresponds to that but uh, it didn't seem very accurate to me I still had to do just as much editing as if I used fixed velocity um, so I didn't I didn't go I don't usually go that route anyway hope that was informational um, if you're a Cubase user it's really easy to do if you use some other DAW you might have some similar capabilities. Um, this might only be available in Cubase Pro, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, hope this uh, helped you out. Um, hope this uh, kind of removes the blockade from creating music. Uh, this helped me a lot because I hated how my drum kit sounded for a while, and then I learned how to do this, and I'm like, okay, I can, I can get by with doing some... Like, I don't have the excuse of a bad sounding kit anymore to hide behind. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.